Hi everybody, I'm Brad Mason, pioneer field agronomist here in Western Illinois. It's currently the third week of July and I want to talk about some of the things that I'm seeing in our corn crop in the area. For the most part, pollination has successfully been completed throughout the area and our fungicide and insecticide applications are pretty well wrapped up. There are still a few flights going, but for the most part, most of those applications have been completed to date. I do want to talk about this year that's in my hand. This year was pulled from the field behind me and as you can see there are kernels all the way from the base all the way up to the tip of that ear. The reason why I want to point that out is because this is optimal. We want to make sure that we give this ear or this corn crop the most potential we can. So if we pollinate every single ovule on here that gives us the most potential. However there are some ears out there that you'll see the tip is not or there are no kernels present on this tip. It could be because they were aborted, it could be because we didn't pollinate. And I'll talk through the difference here in a minute. But I also wanna talk about staging the crop at this point. This can be a little tough as we reach these stages because at R3 is when this ear starts to turn yellow or roasted ear as some people would call it. R3 would be defined as milk stage. And how we would identify that is if I take this kernel or a kernel off of here and cut it or break it open, and a white liquid comes out, that means we're in the milk stage. However, if I were to cut the kernel open and it be a solid slash gelatinous substance, it would be called the dough stage, which would be R4. A lot of the ears that I've been pulling have been anywhere from R3 to R4, so that means we're getting farther along in the reproductive stages than we, we may be typical to as the third week of July. So I want to change subjects a little bit here and talk about the difference between a missed pollination and an aborted kernel. You can see on the tip of this ear we're missing some of those kernels. So how do we identify? So if we how do we identify the missed pollination? So when it comes to this ear, the silks actually start down at the base. These silks down here, about the fifth kernel up, will be the first to emerge at the top. So these these silks will start growing first and on and on and on and actually the last silks to emerge will be at the very tip so that means these get pollinated last so if we happen to run out of pollen if these silks are covered up by all the other silks at the uh, on the ear then we could possibly miss that pollen and then not get those ovules fertilized and how do we identify that is if you look at the ear where that kernel should be and you notice it's smooth and and maybe even these silks are still attached, as you can see here. Um, that means that most likely we missed the pollination. It's not shriveled, it just looks like the ovule is there and there's nothing else. Nothing's, no growth has been done. It's not shriveled or anything like that. However, as I make my way a little closer to the kernels here, you can see some of these ovules are actually shriveled. And that means we're actually aborting it. The aborted ear, or aborted kernel, I don't have that much of an issue with seeing these aborted kernels up at the top. That means I'm using every amount of energy I can to produce this ear. And if I have full ears of unaborted uh, kernels anywhere on this, that means that I probably left something out on the table. I'm not planting thick enough. I may be uh, putting too much nutrients on and, and I need to dial some of my management practices in for the crop. So when I'm looking at these aborted, I look at the same thing. I'm looking for those ovules or kernels and I look to see if they're shriveled up, shrunk in, things like that. That means that at some point this crop decided to abort that kernel. There's several things that could abort that kernel. When we were just past pollination in the area, we were still in the highs of 90s and our, and our nights were still in the 80s and, and, and 70s. And that can put a lot of stress on this crop. It could possibly cause some of the abortion to happen on these kernels. The other thing is that it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world when it comes to this ear. So when it comes to food, about the fifth kernel up eats first, and so on and so forth. So when you're at a buffet and you're at the front of the line, you get the fattest, you get the most food, and then the next person gets their fill, their fill, their, their fill. And if you don't have enough nutrients or the crop comes under stress, at some point you may run out of food. And when you run out of food, these will starve and we make sure that we get enough food and energy for these kernels that we have closer to the base. The other thing I like to talk about is, if you look at the kernels when you're going up a row, you may notice that there's a swivel 
or you may notice that it looks like something's missing. Like I said earlier, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. So if, say, one of these silks was underneath a pile of other silks and it got pollinated after its neighbors, it's a survival of the fittest. If that kernel's smaller, big brother around it will pick on little brother and eventually try and kind of absorb around it. So that's why when you're doing your yield checks at the end of the year, a lot of times you'll notice it's not a perfect straight row. There's some kind of zig and zag to it and that's because those kernels are actually overgrowing that smaller kernel and taking away its energy and eventually kind of just snuffing it out and, and utilizing all the energy they possibly can. Overall, the crop looks really good. We've got a much needed cool down and that is going to help save us a lot because in that R3, R4 time frame is where a lot of our test weight comes in. So those deep kernels and if we would have continued on those highs of 90s to 100s and those hot nights, we ran the risk of some very small seed possibly uh, in the fall. So there is some crop that is a little farther ahead, but the, the crop that is at that R2, R3, or R4 stage right now in this cool down will really benefit from this weather we're having and hopefully we can get a little moisture. Thanks for watching. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.